Greetings, friends, and welcome to Beast Foundry. My name is Christian, and as usual, I will be your guide today. Now today, we're going to talk about some of the other mechanics of Pathfinder 2nd Edition that people are a very big fan of, and that is the trip, the shove, grapple, all of these are used with your athletics skill. It is a strength-based skill. Now, one thing I want to talk about is there's a lot of strategy that can go into using these various different skills. One of the big things is I see people will trip often, but they do it without really strategizing what's going on. I've seen so many times that a you know someone will trip the enemy and then that enemy goes next and they get up and do their the rest of their turn, which is good. It has removed one of their actions, so it's helped with the action economy. And if you have someone that has a tax of opportunity, that getting up provokes that. So it is certainly of a benefit. However, if you have characters, particularly range characters, that are going to benefit from that enemy being knocked down because now they are considered flat-footed, those characters might want to delay until the enemy has been tripped. So if you have one of your players is, you know, the big beefy barbarian or you know, fighter champion that is very good at tripping, you might want to delay until after they have gone. That way you can capitalize on that and you get that benefit without having to worry about getting into position for flanking if you're another melee character, or you can just gain that benefit if you're using spell attacks or other ranged attacks. Now, because all of these use your athletic skill, your bonus to this is, is static. It's always going to be the same, but you have a myriad of options. You have, of course, Trip, which we talked about, that targets the enemy's reflex. You also have Shove, which targets their fortitude. You have Grapple, which targets their fortitude. Now, Shove doesn't create any benefit for your allies to attack them. It just, you know, moves them back. But Grapple, a Grapple target, is also flat-footed against other attacks. So... Tripping and grappling are awesome because those ranged characters that cannot get flanking, it allows them to capitalize on that bonus of being the enemy being flat footed and their armor class being reduced by two. So just tripping is good, but be aware of what the other players, how they operate, where they are in the initiative. Maybe you want to delay until after the enemy goes, which has its own advantage because if there's distance between you and the enemy, that enemy instead has to use one of their actions to close the gap, where if you close the gap, they now have all of their actions and you're standing right there. So of course, you know, this is a very strategic game. So just pay attention to your surroundings and the grid, however you guys are playing. A lot of people, most people are playing on VTTs, but if you have your at-home table, most people have some sort of grid that they are using as, just because that's how the game is kind of based. With your trip targeting reflex, most low-level enemies their reflex is higher than their armor class. It is most of the time the most difficult thing to hit for a lower level enemy. Once you start getting into higher levels, you kind of start fighting like bigger, beefier monsters of ogres and giants and things like that. And all of a sudden, their reflex becomes one of their lowest. So it's something you kind of have to pivot a little and also be aware of what you're fighting. If it's a big, beefy monster, it's going to have a high fortitude. It's going to have a low reflex. So you're going to want to trip. If it is a agile, you know, sprightly kind of monster, you're going to want to use grapple because you're targeting fortitude. It will most likely have a lower fortitude than it will a reflex. So pay attention to the enemy and make sure you're using a bonus that is going to get the most benefit for your group. And these bonuses are huge. You know, if you have an enemy flat-footed and someone intimidates that enemy, that is a total 
bonus of three points off of their armor class if someone's trying to target their armor class, which in Pathfinder 2nd Edition is very big. That that changes the dynamic substantially. And you know, there's other things that can be added on top of that, other bonuses from other classes. So you know, really pay attention and look at how your group composition is. I'm not saying you have to build your group all around this stuff, but sometimes simply delaying your action so that you go after the character that does these things could be of a huge benefit. And also be aware that you know, sometimes you might have an enemy that is pretty hurt. And I've seen this more than a few times. Everyone keeps spending that action to try to trip it. Oh, it's really hurt. I'm going to trip it. Where if they had actually just attacked it, they would have killed it. But they get very single minded and focused on I want to trip. This is what I'm going to do. And in essence, they drag out the fight and then causes more damage to their allies, which then consumes more resources after the fight or takes longer for people to use medicine checks to get healed up. So it all of these things you just kind of have to pay attention to. I, I know it's very simple, like, OK, my character, I'm, you know, I have a fighter and I'm going to use knockdown and that's what I do every round. And you have the rogue that's like, OK, he's going to get into flanking. But if that rogue goes first and no one's up there, it's OK to delay because you would be at a much greater advantage if a character, if that your fighter gets up there, uses that knockdown. You don't have to worry about getting all the way into flanking this turn. You could just get next to them, use it next turn. And likewise, any of your spellcasters will spell attack rolls. This is a huge benefit to them. That plus two, it's not really a plus two when the enemy's flat footed, their armor class is lower by two, but you know, half of one, six, a dozen of the other. You still have a two point differential that you get to play around with that now it's that much easier to hit your opponent. So it's, I just wanted to make this short video to just bring this awareness out because I see it a lot and I think it's something that all of us could work on. I know I've been guilty of it too. You're just like, okay, this is what I'm going to do when you realize, oh, you know what? I actually probably should maybe delay, let the enemy even go, which is sometimes people are like, I don't want to wait and let the enemy go before me. But in all actuality, it can often be the best thing to do because now all of your allies can attack it possibly with a plus two bonus, increasing the likelihood of hitting, increasing the likelihood of getting critical hits and allowing the fight to end that much faster. That's really all I have for you guys today. Just making a quick short video. And as usual, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Give us a follow if you want to see more. And uh, here in the next couple of months, we have a lot of exciting stuff coming up for you guys. So I really hope you you follow us and stay tuned. And as usual, game well, my friends.